Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight Wave, and today I'm joined by somebody I'm incredibly excited to speak with. If you know anything about me by now, you know I love Australian MMA, and today's guest is no exception to that pecking order. Coming off a phenomenal victory over John Vake at Eternal 86, a fight that really showed his star power prowess, and just at only 24 years of age, the skill set that he possesses coming out of Triple X Fight Academy in Sydney, Australia. I am privileged to be joined by the one and only Mr. Lachlan Stitt. Lachlan, thank you so much for your time, brother. And first and foremost, man, do you know how to make an introduction coming into an event and saving the best for last with a phenomenal win over John Vake? First and foremost, how are you feeling? Great. Um, man, you know, coming off a win like that against uh, such an experienced opponent and and with the performance, uh, I'm super happy with my performance. Obviously, you know, a couple of things that we can always improve on, but um, I'm just glad to, you know, show that I can go the distance, show that I can be dragged into deep water and uh, and come out on top. Absolutely. And one thing that I loved about this fight, and now, you know, riding a two-fight winning streak since your first career loss as a pro, I feel like you, like you talked about in other interviews, you really see the evolution and progression coming off a loss. You know, a lot of times young fighters, when they come off a loss, not necessarily the same, but for you, quite the opposite. You've only gotten better since that career loss and really yeah. shown leaps and bounds in your improvement. Talk to me just about, you know, like you said, not really being too fond of the performance, but being able to to take what you can from it and continuing to develop so early on in your fighting career. Yes, uh, I knew that I needed to change a few things, um, you know, outside of the cage, not only inside. Um, and that is shown, you know, in my two recent um, performances, how much I've matured, uh, you know, as a fighter, uh, as a person as well. Um, the external, you know, way I deal with things and, and leading into the fight and my priorities and, and stuff like that. So uh, I think I'm just sort of starting to, to get a, a good grasp on how to do things and, you know, and you're going to see me improve. No, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you look at the gym right now at Triple X Fighting Academy, you know, one thing that really stands out to me is just how young the gym is. And I feel like that's kind of a theme throughout Australia as every gym is incredibly young in terms of skill and talent. And when you have two of arguably the best welterweights in all of Australia training together, it can make for quite a scary situation for the rest of the region. Talk to me a little bit just yeah. about the experience of training at Triple X Fight Academy alongside, you know, one of the only other welterweights in Australia that really, you know, when you talk about him, you think about, man, this guy it has really got the chops in the form of Caleb right out. Yeah, it's been great, man. We've trained together uh, since, uh, you know, I was 17. Uh, Kay's a few years older than me and, and it's been great. You know, he's been ahead of me. Uh, he turned pro before me, had his, his pro fights and it's been great to sort of see him progress, you know, from amateur uh, through to pro and sort of pave the way, you know, and he's good to, you know, ask questions and stuff because he's been there. He's been in the deep end. Um, it's been great. And then, you know, me coming come in behind him as well. I'm holding the belt now as well. So he's fighting in 11 uh, or 10 weeks. So if we hold uh, the two biggest welterweight belts in the country, it'll be pretty amazing. No, yeah, definitely. And talking about King of the Walterweights, of course, he's slated to fight Kit Campbell at the upcoming Hex event. And then you, of course, assuming Eternal Walterweight Gold, just the past event, you know, at Eternal 86. Right now, it feels like in terms of just taking information from each other, you know, both of you still very young. You, 24, and like you mentioned, him a few years older, I think 26, 27, if memory serves me correctly. Just two very young fighters who are only getting better and showing that age isn't necessarily a metric for how much you know in the fight game. How important has it been for you to really separate the two and show that, hey, I might be only 24 years of age, but my skill is far beyond my years and my fights prove that? Uh, absolutely. Um, I believe in myself wholeheartedly, you know, believe in my skill, um, believe in my team, my coaches, my preparation. Uh, you know, I've been training for 10 years now um, in MMA. So, you know, I'm not I'm not young, you know, to the training. Um, obviously, my my pro record you know is is quite young still but you saw that in my last fight that i can handle the adversity i can handle someone with you know upwards of 20 fights um you know four times as many fights as i have so you saw that in my last fight and you, you're seeing that on the region um at the moment you know you've got these young guys that are coming up against these hardened veterans and and taking them out so you, you see it the proof is there Absolutely. And that was going to bring me to my next point. You know, I don't think we've ever seen a year quite like 2023 and 2024 for Australian MMA, where you see young fighters with maybe, you know, five or so fights as a pro, give or take, yeah. coming on and just 
beating the number one guy arguably in their position. When you look at George Mongos against Justin Van Heerden, John O'Mikalev versus Joseph Luciano, you know, you look at even Harry Webb versus Abdullah Biata, the proof is in the pudding. And I feel like when you talk about a country that gives the young fighters a chance to shine, no other yeah. un- country comes on the record quite like Australia. How much of a kind of inspiration has that been for you to kind of be able to do the same or follow in your peers' footsteps and show that, you know, the young generation is here to take over and is here to stay? Well, I took huge inspiration, you know, from George, uh, George's performance, you know, against Justin. And he showed that, you know, suffer some adversity, you know, early in the fight and, and, and stay calm, stay patient and come out on top. And that was, you know, what my coaches said to me in our game plan. Uh, coming into this fight because we knew how tough John was. We knew how tough these these veterans are. They're they're not, you know, they haven't got twenty fights for no reason. They're 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 beasts. Um so yeah, that's that's the thing. I think there's a lot of there's a changing of the guard happening at the moment in Australian MMA. Uh and you're gonna see a lot of potential, especially coming into those big promotions from Australia. No, yeah, definitely. And one thing I wanted to highlight, especially in Sydney, it feels like, you know, you talk about George Mongos, it feels like there's a young hub of absolute killers, especially in Sydney brewing right now, which are like Fight Academy and Lions Den. I was just curious, have you gone over to Lions Den ever to cross train or just like, what are your thoughts on just what they're building there? And you see other young guys getting after it. You know, what's it been like just seeing, you know, a lot of guys from the same city coming together and continuing to make waves in the scene? It's, it's great to see, man. You know, when we have the local shows here, we always catch up. And, and I've been to Lions Den, you know, I've trained with, you know, the likes of George and, and stuff like that. They have some great, great amateurs coming up, um, some great featherweights. Michael Stanoff, you know, is a lightweight. He's, he's been great. Um, he's coming back. Um, but Luke Bazzuti, you know, he runs a great show over there. And, and you know, we've got some great amateurs coming up here, um, you know, featherweights and lightweights that that do cross train with the Lions Den boys and they've been unreal. You know, it's great to see that, you know, people in Sydney, you know, we can get along and help each other, um, you know, because we're all chasing the same goal. We all have the same interests. You know, we love the sport. Um, so it's great to see them helping each other. No, yeah, definitely. And when you talk about that, it brings me to my next point, which is just how unselfish the scene is. And I feel like in part that unselfish nature from the fighters, especially in the gyms, has been kind of a part and reason why Australian MMA has grown so much that it has since COVID. You look at, you know, young fighters helping each other really assume that dream, like you said, of making it to that next level. How much have you seen, like, what would be your biggest takeaway, I guess, from when you first started training to now in terms of something that has changed in the scene so much that you can't help but think about it from time to time? Uh, I think just the the level of promotion as well. When I first started, you know, the promotions weren't, you know, they weren't getting as much exposure. Whereas to now they have, you know, the UFC Fight Pass deal, the BN Sports deal, you know, they're being streamed all over the world. So we get, you know, so much more um, exposure, you know, as athletes on those bigger promotions. Um, so that's been a real shift and, and, and it's great for the athletes. You know, it's great for the promotion as well that they get out there. You know, a lot of people around the world love watching Aussie MMA uh, and even the grassroots, you know, even the small promotions, uh, the amateur ones, they're pushing guys through, you know, more development days now. I never had development days, you know, when I uh, first started competing. Now there's MMA um, development days, you know, in a, in a safe area for them not to get hit in the head, uh, only body shots, you know, practice takedowns in that environment. So that's great to see. Um we always get the, the new amateurs in our gym to go down and, and get that um, get that time on the mat in. So that's been great as well. Um, I think it's only going to involve even more, honestly. Oh, yeah, definitely. And especially when you talk about the amateurs in Australia, if you can even call them amateurs, I feel like semi-pro is a quite a better term because it's yeah. literally everything yeah. besides the title. Everything is the same thing as a, as a pro environment. And I feel like, like you yeah. said, the shows and the quality – just molding to kind yeah. of encompass that pro environment has been, you know, such pivot, such a pivotal point in growing the scene. And I know for you, especially, you know, the opportunities in Australia, you know, you see a lot of fighters going over to Thailand, training there. I know you, for some part of the camp, were trading in Thailand at Tiger Muay Thai. How, how much of a significant attribute has that been for you just to be able to get out of your comfort zone, go to Thailand and just be able to train there and get different looks? 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, great question. Being over there in Thailand has been unreal. Uh, obviously, I, I competed in the Tiger Muay Thai tryouts last year uh, and was awarded a uh, sponsorship by them. Uh, so that's been great to to be able to go train over there in the heat. Uh, the intensity, I don't know if you've spoken to other people from Tiger, but the intensity is crazy. Um, you always go hard. You know you have hard rounds there. You've got a room full of absolute killers. Um, the coaches there are great. You know, they bring them they're bringing the best coaches from around the world to to teach there. Uh, you know, you got um, Coach Chris there, the MMA coach, uh, Alexi uh, Ruslan, uh, the Russian uh, coach, been great. And training with a lot of Russians as well. Um, that's over there. You know, you got Sambo World Champions, uh, you know, stuff like that. So that's been uh, unreal to train with them and feel their power. They're, they're so strong, man. You know, I was training with um, some middle and light heavyweight. Uh, Russian fighters, you know, leading into the John uh, fight, so that really got me prepared and and, and fit as fit as man. The the fitness that they do over there under Coach Jay Pato and Mike uh, is unreal. You know, their fitness is is crazy. So I came back fully ready to go. Absolutely, and one thing I love about the fight game, and I know for you, and I always stress this important importance for the young fighters, especially, is get out there and travel the world through the fight game. It is one of the most important things I Absolutely. think young fighters need to take away and I know for you Lachlan still only 24 years of age you've seen more countries than probably most yeah. people have in their lifetimes just also as a tourist but also through the yeah. fight game the beauty of going to so many different places what has that part of the fight game kind of meant to you to go and see so many beautiful and amazing places through a hobby and passion in the form of fighting unbelievable you know when you when you travel and you uh, connect with these other people you have the same interests it's it's awesome you can build lifelong friendships um you know obviously mma the sport itself is an individual sport but you know it's such a bonding uh bonding sport as well you bond with your teammates you know with your sparring partners um you know people like that and it's and it's great to meet people from all around the world with different styles you know uh, they bring different styles so training in thailand as well gives me you know a reach to be able to train with you know uh, russian fighters you know brazilians um, you know, all different types of, of fighters, you know, Swiss fighters, um, you know, French, have people from all around the world. So you get a little bit of a mix of, of all different styles and, and everyone's so welcoming, you know, in, in the sport of MMA. No one's, you know, no one's rude or, or, you know, pushes you away sort of thing. Everyone's willing to help. That's what I love about the sport. Uh, and that's what I'm a big advocate and I'll always stay stay true to myself in this sport and, and you know, be respectful and, and stuff like that. Absolutely. And I got to ask just out of curiosity, if you had to put a favorite location that you've been or a favorite country that you've visited through the fight game, what would that country be? Apart from Thailand, of course, I feel like Thailand's the obvious number one, just in terms of the quality yeah. of training. But like, apart from Thailand, what would you say is the most special place you've traveled or visited through the fight game? Uh, definitely would have been Dublin when I went to Dublin uh, about 10 years ago. I went to Straight Blast Gym, um, where Connor obviously comes from, and I met uh, met John Kavanagh. You know, I met a few of his coaches and stuff. Unfortunately, I just missed him by 20 minutes. He, j he just finished up training 20 minutes, and then I, I got there. But um, that was awesome to be able to go there and, and see, you know, even now to where he's he's come in, in 10 years. Um you know, where he come from, you know, the old gym, you know, it was nothing flash, nothing special. Um, you know, seeing all the pictures on the wall, I still remember um, walking through there and that was a crazy, crazy experience. And then to see his career evolve, you know, over the last 10 years shows that it can be done. You know, it, it can be done through work, working hard and stay dedicated and you can get there. Absolutely. And when you talk about straight blast gym, obviously one of the gyms that the best to ever do it has trained out of. And, you know, I, on fight wave, you know, we got a segment of course, that for me, I love to talk to, especially the younger fighters about in terms of just, if you had to build a perfect fighter, you know, when you're talking about these four attributes, and this is just a game we play, you know, IQ striking, grappling and cardio, what would be your perfect fighter when you look at the entire database of fighters that have ever trained the sport of mixed martial arts? Who would be Lachlan Stitt's perfect fighter? Oh man, I definitely um, I'd have to go um, Mirko Krokops, you know, left uh, left kick, and then obviously I love the way um, Rob um, you know sets up the one two right high kick. Um, then it'd have to be probably Dominic Cruz's fight IQ. 
you know, the way he moves and, and stuff. I love that. Also, uh, Demetrius Johnson has unreal fight IQ. Um, John Jones is striking, striking, unreal. Um, that'd be crazy. Uh, and then Khabib's obviously wrestling. Um, that's how I'd build my sort of perfect, perfect fighter. Absolutely. And I got to ask you the final attribute, you know, cardio. I want to ask if you had to pick oh. the perfect cardio. Oh, man. Um, uh, probably Colby Covington. He has oh, solid job. He has pretty good cardio. Ca- ca- yeah. I yeah. think he's I think he's pretty good cardio wise. Absolutely. Uh, maybe not best, but just the cardio. <laughs> no, just the cardio, nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. But you know, great just fighter. Yeah, no, yeah. Absolutely. And you know, yeah. all, and you know, I wanna thank you so much for your time, Lachlan. And you know, to get on to the final note, of course, you know, for you still only twenty four years of age, but your experience yeah. far outweighs your age, and I think we you've made that evidently clear with your last fight against John Vake at Eternal 86. And, you know, the fight that is obviously slated next, or, you know, I don't know if it's formally been announced yet, but I know you guys did face off in the Octagon. You and Alden Bates, yeah. uh, the Hex Welterweight champion, who is stepping over, I think, to Eternal, if I remember correctly. You look at that fight for you on paper, it is the perfect opponent. And, you know, he is a guy who carries a lot of experience. And when you talk about, you know, a guy with a win over him, that sets you up for a lot of amazing things moving forward. I got to ask yeah. you just your thoughts on the matchup with Alden. And, you know, what's your message to the supporters of Lachlan Stitt at home who may be watching this? Yeah, you know, the Alden fight, nothing's been, um, been signed or anything yet. So it hasn't been announced. But, you know, if I get to fight Alden later in the year, um, that'll be a great, great fight to meet. You know, another big name in Australian MMA. Um, you know, he thinks he can... He, he has more power and he can finish me inside three rounds and well, good luck to him. You know, he can, he can try, but, um, you know, once you're in there and you feel how feel my power and stuff like that, then you'll change it up. So no, I'm, I'm prepared to put on another great, great show, uh, for people that tune in and just stay supporting, man. You know, I work hard day in, day out and, and, and I want to get to the top. Um, uh, so every, for everyone's support, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You know, thus far in my career, and we're only going up from from here, so stay tuned. Definitely, and to the fans at home watching, I gotta say the best is yet to come. And to you, Lachlan, thank you so much for your time. And to the fans at home watching, keep an eye on 24-year-old rising star Lachlan Stitt out of Triple X Fighting Academy in Sydney, Australia. One of the best young talents in all of Australia right now. Do be sure to check him out on social media. I will be linking his socials in the description down below, as I always love to say. Support your local fighter. It goes a long way. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed, and have a great day, guys.